have a few moments for question and answers. Now, the bishops do have a very full schedule today, uh, so I would ask if we can limit ourselves to one question and one follow-up so everyone has an opportunity to ask a question, and then if we have more time, certainly we can open the floor up for additional questions. Uh, I would like to briefly turn your attention to your media packets that you received upon entering our building. In those packets, there's a copy of today's press release, uh, a fact sheet about the Diocese of Harrisburg, biographical information for both Bishop Gaynor and Bishop Senior, uh, as well as information on how bishops are selected in the Catholic Church. So one last note before I turn the podium over, uh, and this is for my colleagues, our clergy, and our special guests here joining us this morning. Uh, so this is a working press conference, so I would ask you to please allow the media to have their opportunities to ask questions. Bishop Gaynor and Bishop Senior will be touring the building immediately following the press conference, so you will have plenty of opportunities to speak with them one-on-one -on -one once the press conference has concluded. So at this time, it is now my honor and my privilege to introduce His Excellency, the Most Reverend Ronald W. Gaynor, 11th Bishop of Harrisburg. Thanks, Rachel, and good morning, everyone. And thank you to our diocesan center staff for gathering here this morning. Thank you also to the members of the media who are here with us. You help us to spread the message of the diocese and our church, and I'm very grateful for your presence here this morning. There's a classic country song with the lyrics, it seems like only yesterday, gee, ain't it funny how time passes away. I think I might make those words my new Episcopal motto. Uh, I'm considering it anyway. But at least to me, it does seem like only yesterday that I was sitting in this very room for the announcement that Pope Francis had appointed me the 11th Bishop of Harrisburg. As you may know, the selection of a new bishop for a diocese is highly confidential until the official announcement is made. The retirement of a bishop has not happened in the Harrisburg Diocese since 1971, when Bishop George Leach retired 52 years ago. The five bishops between Bishop Leach and me managed to exit the diocese without retiring. Today is certainly a joyous day, as Rachel said, for our clergy, the religious, and the laity of our diocese and for the members, especially of our diocesan staff, and for me personally. Today's announcement is one that we've been expecting now for several months. As you may recall, in August of 2022, I reached my 75th birthday, and following church law, I submitted my letter requesting retirement to the Holy Father. And I know a great many people have been praying since then for the man who would be selected as our next bishop. And with today's announcement, I know those fervent prayers have been answered. When it is known that a bishop is retiring, there's a good amount of speculation that takes place regarding his successor. On Saturday, April, Sunday, April the 16th, the Sunday of Divine Mercy, I received a phone call from the Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, that put an end to all the guesswork. I was very pleased when the Annuncio told me that the Most Reverend Timothy C. Sr., one of the auxiliary bishops of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, would be our next bishop here in Harrisburg. The Feast of Divine Mercy will forever have a new significance for me. I've known Bishop Sr. for more than 25 years and have full confidence that he will be a caring, faithful shepherd who will speak the truth with love and conviction, leading the Diocese of Harrisburg as a true successor of the Apostles. His experience as the Vicar General, the Vicar for Clergy, and the Secretary for Catholic Human Services in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia gives him a wealth of skills that will be invaluable here 
in the Diocese of Harrisburg. Bishop Sr. also comes to us with numerous skills in business administration, and he has a comprehensive knowledge and experience in the formation of those who are preparing for the priesthood. In the many meetings that we have had together over the years, I have witnessed his tremendous skills of administration, as well as his fatherly heart and compassion for the seminarians and the faculty under his care. Just a little side note, Bishop Sr. is also a classically trained pianist. I'm confident that the music and singing at our diocesan Christmas party will be kicked up a few notches <laughs> next this coming Christmas. I'm very grateful to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for sending to the Diocese of Harrisburg a man devoted to living the demands of the gospel. As we enter this new chapter in the history of our diocese, I do so with confidence that the offices of teaching, sanctifying, and shepherding in our local church are in the very best hands. Now, it is my great privilege and my honor to welcome the Most Reverend Timothy C. Sr., now designated as the 12th Bishop of the Diocese of Harrisburg. Thank you so much. And good morning, everyone. My heart is filled with gratitude this morning. I'm grateful to God, first and foremost, of course, to Pope Francis for appointing me to this wonderful diocese in Harrisburg, to Archbishop Christophe Pierre, and most especially also to Bishop Ronald Gaynor, to Archbishop Nelson Perez, the Archbishop of Philadelphia, and to his predecessors in, in my home diocese, Archdiocese of Philadelphia, and to so many others. I've been blessed beyond measure with opportunities in ministry throughout my life to serve as a priest and as a bishop, and now this latest wonderful blessing to have been named the 12th Bishop of Harrisburg. Praised be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Bishop Gaynor has been a, a truly good and gentle shepherd to the church in Harrisburg, caring for those entrusted to his pastoral care in an exemplary way. He's been a strong and effective leader through challenging times. I will work every day to ensure continuity in leadership, in the administration of the diocese, in the care of souls, and with particular concern for survivors of sexual abuse by clergy. As Bishop of Harrisburg, all of the policies and procedures that are in place to protect children to respond to allegations of sexual abuse and to care for survivors in the diocese will remain in place and will continue to be reviewed and evaluated for potential improvement. But thank you, Bishop Gaynor, for your faithful and dedicated ministry as Bishop of Harrisburg. I've had the opportunity already to meet and speak with some of the very talented and deeply committed administrative staff here in the diocese. Uh, Bishop Gaynor has assembled a very impressive team and I, I look forward to working with them and, and with the others whom I've yet to meet. And I'm so very grateful to the members of the diocesan staff who have already been assisting me in recent days. I wanna say a word uh, to the church in Philadelphia, uh, the church that with my dear parents and family, uh, nurtured my faith, encouraged my vocation. It's been the context of abundant blessings. I could never count them in 38 years as a priest and 12, 14 years uh, which I've served as an auxiliary bishop. I wanna say a special shout out to my family and friends and colleagues in Philadelphia and in other parts of the country who are joining us via live stream. 
especially to my sister Myra, uh, my, my niece Myra Catherine. So I'm sorry, <laughs> I always do this. <laughs> Uh, to my sister-in-law, Anne Marie, and, my, and her children and grandchildren, and my other family members, especially, I have to say, my niece and godchild, Jacqueline. Today's her birthday, so happy birthday, Jacqueline. Uh, and to special prayers to my great niece, Alice, and my great nephew, Luke, who are going to be receiving their first Holy Communion on Saturday. Now, Uncle Tim is still going to be able to join you for the celebrations this weekend. So I love you all very much. Until last... Uh, the seminary, as, uh, uh, excuse me, in the Archdiocese, I do have to say to a, a, a thank you to my brother bishops, to priests and deacons, the seminarians and the religious, and so many lay men and women and dear friends in Philadelphia. Just know that together with my family, I will always hold you in my heart with love and gratitude. Until last July, as Bishop Gaynor mentioned, I was the rector of St. Charles Borromeo Seminary, where I had received my own formation for the priesthood, both as a seminarian a few years ago and as rector, I was fortunate to get to know some of the priests in the Diocese of Harrisburg who are priests today, and especially more recently, those who have been ordained within the last 10 years whom I was fortunate to accompany as their rector to the priesthood as seminarians. The seminary has been a huge part of my life and I am so grateful for that. Since leaving my position as rector, I've been the chancellor of the seminary, in addition to my duties as regional bishop in the archdiocese. St. Charles is at a critical moment in its almost 200 year history. In summer of 2024, the community is gonna be leaving the campus in Wynwood and moving to a new campus, which is under construction in Lower Gwynedd in Montgomery County. And this process is well underway and will continue now with very strong and deeply committed leadership that is in place at the seminary, particularly in Father Keith Chalinski, who is rector and in his team. So my appointment as Bishop of Harrisburg is not the first time that a former rector of St. Charles has assumed this position. It was in 1868 that Bishop Jeremiah Shanahan was serving as the rector of the preparatory seminary at St. Charles, then in Glen Riddle, Delaware County, when he was appointed as the founding bishop of this great diocese. I'm sure he is praying for all of us today as well. So looking forward, I assume this responsibility primarily with my focus being to be a good pastor. I desire that more than anything else, to be a leader who is servant first and to announce the gospel of Jesus Christ the transforming love and mercy that flows to us through his death and resurrection. So I ask you, please pray for me that I may be the bishop that the church in Harrisburg needs me to be. As Bishop Gaynor, Gaynor mentioned, we, we both learned that Pope Francis had appointed me as Bishop of Harrisburg on the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. At the time, I was just returning from uh, celebrating mass at St. Barbara Parish in West Philadelphia. And I received a call from the Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Christophe Pierre. At the time, I was not expecting to receive such a call. So to say the least, I was somewhat off guard. But after speaking with him, realizing the news, obviously accepting the appointment with some trepidation, I carried my bag and my crozier back into the rectory where I lived, and I headed to church to make a visit to the Blessed Sacrament. It's one of those moments where you go before the Lord. It's difficult sometimes to find the words. You need to just sit and rest for a moment before the amazing truth of the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. And then Jesus is this really what you want me to do? And a tremendous sense of peace descended upon me. So grateful for that. Because the truth, the truth and the peace came upon me as I called to mind the words of the chaplet of divine mercy. So near and dear to my heart came quickly. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. I trust in you. Jesus. I trust in you. 
This is the Jesus whom we proclaim. Jesus in whom we trust and who gives meaning and purpose to our lives. To my brother priests now in the Diocese of Harrisburg, while I am fortunate to know some of you, I very much look forward to getting to know all of you. You will, of course, be the principal collaborators in the mission of the local church. And I know that I will learn much from you, I need to, and I will work hard with you and for you in the mission that is entrusted to us. I've had the opportunity, as I mentioned, to get to know some of our Harrisburg seminarians, those who have been at St. Charles, but I look forward to meeting all of you as well and to working together in this local church to encourage vocations in all forms among our young people, especially vocations to the priesthood. The diocese is blessed with permanent deacons and men and women religious, and I look forward to serving with you as well, together with the wonderful lay faithful of the diocese, and to reach out to men and women of all faiths or of no faith, to work with our elected officials and civic leaders in this great region of our commonwealth, seeking to promote the common good, to be an instrument to build community, and to foster the development of what Pope Francis calls a culture of encounter. I have a lot to learn about the 15 counties that comprise the Diocese of Harrisburg. I look forward to learning the history, to hearing the stories, to experiencing the variety of traditions and cultures that shape our local church. Thank you all for coming this morning. Especially also thank you to those who are joining us on live stream. Thanks especially to the representatives of the media. I look forward to getting to know you as well in the months and years to come. It is a great blessing for me to receive this appointment from Pope Francis as the 12th Bishop of Harrisburg. I just can't wait to get started. Let's pray for each other and God bless you all. Thank you, Bishop Senior. All right, I'll open up to our colleagues in the press. Are there any questions? Yes. Yes, uh, I think a lot of lay people might not be familiar with the, the, the church law of retirement at 75 or the offer of retirement. Um, could you talk a little bit about if this was expected to be accepted and the delay? Surely, yeah. Uh, one of our uh, canon, law, one of the canons in church law requires when your your seventy fifth birthday is approaching that you write a letter submitting your resignation to the Holy Father. It's always accepted, but the time is indeterminate. So it could be months, it could be years, uh, depending, I guess, on the circumstances of finding a. The, the Vatican certainly makes a, a good effort at trying to match the needs of the diocese with the skills of the one who would be coming in as, as the next bishop. So there's no uh, expected time lapse. It, 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 it can be a few months. Uh, it, you know, in this case, it was last August, so until, until April. Um, so the uh, time is uh, complete. There's an office that helps uh, the, the pope proposes the um, candidates and it's called the dicastery for bishops. So they do begin a process. When that letter is received, then a process has begun really under the supervision of the apostolic nuncio in the, whatever country it might be. And uh, he'll, he'll have uh, proposed candidates. He'll send out questionnaires to vet those. And, and, and in the end, there may be 40, 50 or more uh, people who have been uh, allowed to comment on these different candidates. That's all compiled and then sent to the office in Rome. So there is a, a rather uh, elaborate process 
in uh, choosing the next bishop. Ultimately, uh, three candidates are proposed. He receives what's called a turner, uh, and he'll have the files on three um, candidates that uh, the Office for Bishops uh, believes would, any one of them would be a good choice. And the Holy Father would review those and make a choice. So the, the, the time, though, is, is just, uh, it, 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 there, there's no set time for it. And uh, as I say, it, it could happen within a few months, or sometimes it takes uh, more than a year or several years. I think it's important to be, that sense, as I mentioned, continuity, because the diocese is on a very good trajectory. Bishop, Bishop Gaynor and his team have done an excellent job of, uh, of addressing this, this, uh, this horrible uh, reality that was the sexual abuse of children. So but moving forward from that, I want to keep, make sure that, that there is continuity, but also continual review and, and, and study, and also then to, to get back to what is most important for the core of any church to proclaim the gospel, uh, to live our faith with greater energy and enthusiasm. Uh, it is, it's been a difficult time, but that, that difficulty, please God, will lead to a new fruitfulness, kind of a, a, a rejuvenation, which I believe is already happening. Uh, you, can, you, can, you get that sense from speaking with the, the senior team that, that, that Bishop Gaynor has assembled. So I'm excited about that, keeping our eye, recognizing where we're coming from, but looking for great opportunities that what ultimately what God wants to do in this local church. Well, I think I think I have a a, a sense of uh, of the, the diversity of ministries that a diocese has, uh, having had the experience in, in the, each of those areas. I I uh, sort of grew up in in the work of Catholic charities. Uh, it the my graduate studies prepared me to do that, so I, I do have a heart for that uh, as well as the work of clergy personnel. I was formed by Catholic education. I, I only taught high school for one year, and I always say it was, a, it was the toughest job I ever had, being a high school teacher. Um, and I was, it only, you didn't, I didn't get a second year. They, so first years are always tough for teachers, but I have great love and appreciation for Catholic education, and I recognize, again, the wonderful high schools, the elementary schools, the commitment to Catholic education in this diocese. So I have a sense of, of those ministries, and I, I just, my job is to, to be a catalyst uh, to support first and foremost, and to, to promote the diversity of missions in a, uh, ministries in a diocese, so. Bishop Gaynor, what role do you play now that, I mean, you've been so involved, obviously, in the last decade, but what role do you play in kind of the future of the diocese? Well, I, of course, I remain a bishop, and I would hope, because all of this would require the, the blessing of a bishop senior, but I would uh, hope to be able to continue an active liturgical life, you know, celebrating liturgies in, in the diocese as requested or needed, uh, as well as teaching and preaching. Um, so those, as Bishop Emeritus, I have no uh, administrative responsibilities, so that uh, onus is, is lifted from my shoulders, but I re remain a, 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 a bishop ministering in the church. So uh, wherever I can assist, uh, Bishop Senior, at, at his invitation, with his blessing, I, I'll be more than willing to uh, do that that ministry. Are you looking forward to that? Because you mentioned that some of the onus of the of the administrative duties, which I'm sure is not the most fun at times. I mean, is it something you're looking forward to? I am. Yes, yeah, it's about time. I think. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Michael. You have both the invitation and the support for all of that. So, Whatever be I assured. <laughs> It's interesting, I, I looked up the word emeritus, and I knew we, we use it for many different uh, positions when someone, reach, and, it, and it comes from the military language of the, the Roman army, uh, and it means someone who has uh, completed his term of service. And uh, so it, it, we could translate it veteran, 
Um, but it also, one of the other meanings of it as an adjective is worn out. <clears throat> <laughs> so some of the, the Bishop of Eridus, worn out. <laughs> Yes. Can you tell a little bit about what this transition might look like, and does the church give guidance on that? The, uh, the, the law of the church requires the conference of bishops in each uh, country to uh, have a protocol for what happens to a retired bishop, so that the care of the retired bishop is still with the Diocese of Harrisburg. I, I'll still get um, uh, you know, a monthly uh, pay or stipend for pension, uh, and they, it's required to provide a, a residence and some other, other things. So you, know, it, you continue to uh, receive those benefits uh, having served as the bishop of the diocese. So the, there is a whole list of uh, those things that the diocese is asked to provide for the retired bishop. This does not include a jaguar. Um, I, 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 re recently, recently, I was at, you know, I meet with the kids an hour before confirmation, the candidates, and this little girl put her hand up, and she, well, it's eighth grade, and, and she said, my brother tells me you drive a jaguar. <laughs> I said, not only don't I have a I've never been in a jaguar, but anyhow, I, I, I like my car. <laughs> Joe. Right now, our conversations have just been informal within the sort of the confidentiality of the, the situation. So I look forward to, to working on the transition with, with Bishop Gaynor and, and the administration of the, of the diocese to see how it unfolds leading up to uh, the, uh, the installation. Uh, so it, 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 and I, I guess I'm, I've never done this before. So, uh, and we um, haven't done it for 52 years. So, uh, but I could add to that, Joe, that uh, uh, it, knowing that this day was coming, uh, we have a team already, a, a sort of a leadership team, and then each department of the diocese is going to have some aspect of this transition. Most especially, you know, the, the big event will be uh, the June 21st installation, that great liturgy that we'll be having at the cathedral in preparation. The evening before that, there'll be a vesper. So there's a lot of planning for the liturgical aspects of this, but all the other practical things of the transition of the administration uh, we'll be working on. And oh, Bishop Gaynor remains the, is now has been appointed apostolic administrator of the diocese for this period of time. Um, and uh, so we, he will be basically continuing in his, in his administrative duties until June the 21st. And then uh, again, as we were mentioning, I'll be uh, working with the team to uh, prepare for the transition. It's a high learning curve at first, but uh, I'm already on it. So looking forward to it. So I'm still to be feared. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, we'll see. See no additional oh questions. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we will be around for a few moments. If there's any, you know, brief one-on-ones, as I said, the bishops do have a pretty full schedule today. But if you have a, a quick one-on-one, -on -one, uh, we we would certainly uh, help to facilitate that. Again, thank you all for joining us. Thank you for those who are joining us on the live stream. And Bishop Senior, on behalf of all of us here at the Diocese of Harrisburg, welcome. Thank you again, Rachel. Thank you.